All right, and so with the background that Cindy just provided, I'm going to talk about a decision aid that we created um, to help parents make informed decisions about um, participating in the study uh, and also to help them um, think through the preferences that they have for learning different kinds of sequencing results. I'll also present some preliminary data that, uh, that we have about um, parents, uh, how parents use the decision aid to make these choices. Uh, and some other outcomes that shed light on the kinds of uh, genetic information that parents may want to learn. So why a decision aid? Uh, while newborn screening looks for specific conditions that are treatable and, and affect a child's health or survival, uh, sequencing makes it possible to test for countless more conditions. Asking parents to decide whether to re receive many different categories of genetic information, some of which uh, don't have the same level of actionability, medical actionability, as those, uh, those found through traditional newborn screening, um, prevents many communication challenges. For example, how do we help parents manage the scope of these, de these decisions without overwhelming them uh, with information? Most people don't have a deep understanding of genetics or what sequencing might mean for them and their families. And this sets limited common ground from which we can share information uh, about a difficult topic. Lastly, in most but not all cases, two parents are involved in these uh, decisions for a child. Uh, and so for NC Nexus, we learned, or it became clear very early on, uh, that we would need to adopt a decision-making model that would fit the needs of individual parents as well as parents making choices together. Uh, with these challenges in mind, our approach uh, was to develop an interactive web-based decision aid uh, grounded in theories and principles of informed decision making. Broadly speaking, uh, decision aids are print or audiovisual materials designed to uh, provide information about the decision to be made, um, what the options are, and the potential outcomes of those uh, options. Uh, also to suggest strategies for weighing options against what the decision maker is trying to achieve, and then help people plan a course of action. Crucially, decision aids are not meant to persuade or advocate uh, people to adopt a specific choice uh, over, over a different one. Instead, the goal is to ensure that the decision making is informed and values based. So while we were developing the decision aid, we followed an iterative process. Um, to both develop it, test it, and then refine it um, uh, in, in different stages. Our focus was to create materials that would be accessible and relevant to parents without sacrificing accuracy. So it, we definitely relied heavily on the, the newborn, uh, sorry, not the newborn screening, um, the NC Nexus uh, expert uh, group um, to get feedback and review while we were developing the content. But we also used a variety of methods to gather and use parental input throughout the development process. First, we conducted several rounds of user testing, um, and this was used to identify and correct areas of confusion related to content and navigation. We also conducted interviews with parents to understand how couples communicate with one, one another and make decisions about uh, screening um, or about getting, receiving genetic screen or genomic screening results um, for their child. And lastly, we conducted an online experiment um, with over 1,200 parents of young children uh, to understand which characteristics of genetic health conditions impact uh, the, their decisions to learn different kinds of sequencing results. So the insights that we learned um, from these research activities helped shape the content and design of the NC Nexus decision aid. We learned that couples wanted to collaborate in their decision making. Um, by and large, they looked to one another uh, uh, for support and to arrive at a joint understanding. We also learned that potential benefits and concerns that parents had about learning their child's sequencing results, um, which we used in the educational portions of the decision aid and as examples in the values clarification task that was part of it. We also found that different sequencing results categories were perceived differently by participants. Uh, so for example, we observed uh, greater differences of opinion within couples over categories like non-medically actionable childhood conditions and carrier status. With the next few slides, uh, I'll share a few screenshots for the completed decision aid. In general, the content was organized into three broad sections, an education section, 
uh, a deliberation portion, and then a choice section. Most of the education sections focused on defining terms uh, and explaining what decisions we would ask parents to make. Um, so this included describing the NC Nexus study procedures, as well as some um, background on newborn screening, genomics, and sequencing. Uh, the deliberation portions of the decision aid were a set of interactive tasks, uh, and these were designed to engage parents in the decision-making process and to think critically about the decision options um, that were presented, that they were presented with, and how those fit um, with what matters most to them. And then lastly, the choice sections allowed parents to indicate what they intended to do uh, and provided tailored next steps based on those intentions. Throughout, we applied user-centered design principles. Um, this included a, a lot of different uh, features, um, but I'll just highlight a couple of them. Uh, so the interface allowed users to go at their own pace, um, repeating and reviewing information as needed. Um, we also use plain language and clear communication principles uh, and strategies to present ideas using familiar terms as, as best we could. Um, invariably, when you're dealing with uh, genetics and genomics, there's going to be some unfamiliar terms. Um, and those, we, we did our best to define and give those definitions um, to participants. And then also the decision aid uses a combination of text, graphics, and audio to convey challenging concepts. So in addition to those sort of general characteristics, we also had three tailoring variables in the decision aid, um, which in essence, we ended up developing uh, alternative versions to uh, better fit parents' needs. So uh, tailoring was done um, using uh, a computer algorithm uh, with data that was collected before people used the decision aid. Um, it was offered in two different languages, English and Spanish. We also had um, a version that was designed for single moms to complete on their own, as well as um, one for couples to complete together. Um, there were some, uh, you know, a few differences on, on some screens depending on the, uh, the relationship status. And then lastly, there were some differences between the decision aids um, based on the cohort um, that, that parents were in, so either the, the diagnosed or the well-child cohorts. And then due to the, de the design of the NCNEX randomized trial, we really had decision aids, uh, two decision aids that were organized around different sequencing results categories. Um, so in the first one, all parents made the first decision whether or not to have their child sequenced and to learn um, results from medically actionable childhood onset conditions. Those are the uh, NGS, NBS conditions. Um, and then a randomly selected half, uh, not half, uh, two thirds, were given the option to receive additional sequencing results related to non-medically actionable childhood conditions, medically actionable adult conditions, and carrier status. We organized the second decision aid so that there were distinct education, deliberation, and choice categories or choice sections for each of the additional categories. Uh, and parents were allowed to choose all, some, or none of, of those additional categories. So for the remainder of the presentation, uh, I'll show some preliminary findings. First, here are some uh, demographic characteristics of parents who completed the first decision aid. Um, in all, there were 190 couples and 14 single moms out of this. Um, so when you see the, the fathers and the moms, there were dyads. These were um, uh, represented couples. Um, a majority of the parents were not Hispanic white, uh, though the racial and ethnic uh, diversity of participants tracks pretty well with the population of North Carolina. Um, overall, there was a slightly or a larger proportion of college graduates and um, affluent parents in, in this group. Now, with, with this um, slide, what I really want to highlight is that top row where, you know, consistent with what we found in some of the formative work that we did, that uh, most couples reported working on the decision aid together. Um, there really isn't a, you know, a difference between mothers and fathers, which is, is nice to see that there isn't a uh, disagreement there. Um, but overall, that's what, uh, you know, the working on it together um, was a strategy that uh, parents took. Now, within the, the deliberation portion of the decision aid, we had a, a, a series of tasks that people did. So um, what I'll first talk about is that we had a sorting task where people were shown five um, reasons for or reasons that they might be interested in um, uh, sequencing. 
and then they were presented with five reasons against and asked to sort those in as uh, important, unimportant, and if they were uh, in a uh, couple, um, whether or not they agreed on, on that. Um, and so one of the things that is, is interesting here is that when you look at, uh, based on the choice that people made within, this is within the decision aid, um, the people who either were undecided or leaned more towards saying yes, um, tended to rank a higher number of reasons for, or a, a large number of reasons for, um, and, and relatively few reasons against, whereas the people in the no group um, tended to have more of a balanced um, uh, set of uh, things that they found important from both the, re the reasons for and the reasons against categories. This is pretty consistent with uh, you know, standard behavioral theory, um, though it is interesting that the, in the no group that there was that balance and not a, you know, a disproportionate um, uh, number of reasons against. And then in this uh, next slide, so we asked, uh, before they, they did that sorting task, we asked which way that they were leaning. So basically to get a sense of you know, what they were thinking after they completed the educational portions of the decision aid. And then we did a similar question after the values clarification task, just to see if, if we could see any real differences um, there, you know, to see if the values clarification had an impact on, on their choices. Um, for the most part, those were, were very consistent throughout. Um, and then also, after the decision aid, then they, people would schedule a, a follow-up visit, um, an in-person visit, to um, go through an actual consent process. Or, so the decision aid was really in, augmented that. Um, and again here, um, the people who said no in the decision aid didn't have the option to have the in-person visit. Um, but between the undecideds and the decideds, there's a slightly slightly more people in the in the yes group who who continued through with it um, than in the other one so with this slide we asked a, this was after um, the decision aid was done in a, in a follow-up survey um, we asked a number of different questions trying to get a sense of what people thought about the decision aid and, and working through that process um, uh, I'll focus on the, the bottom row, which is an, an average of all of these uh, items combined. Um, so looking at this, we, uh, the, the questions were on a scale of one to six, where uh, higher values were related to more favorable perceptions of the decision aid. Um, uh, for both mothers and fathers, and in the decision aid one and decision aid two, um, perceptions of the decision aid itself were, were Highly favorable, which was which was nice for us to see, even though um, you know that it, it didn't seem if, on the previous slide. If you looked at how it actually impacted their decisions, um, it didn't seem to do much. But this gives us a sense that it it, it helped them in some way um, with with the decision making process or feeling better about the decision making process itself, even if it didn't it, it impact the choices. Um, so then we're also looking at. Um, how parents with a newborn versus uh, one with a diagnosed child um, differed on, on some outcomes, uh, or even just the flow through the study. So in all of these, there were no differences between these two groups um, uh, in, in terms of you know, whether or not they uh, were undecided or said yes uh, on decision aid one, um, as well as the consent um, at the sequencing visit. And then in the, um, in terms of the, the types of additional, uh, additional results that um, people in these two groups um, chose, for the most part, uh, a majority of parents did choose to receive, if they had the option to receive the additional results, um, though numerically slightly higher in the diagnosed group. Then we also asked a few uh, sort of uh, decision outcomes uh, to get a better sense of how people felt about the decision process, the decisions that they made. Um, so in, in terms of decision regret and satisfaction with partner decision making, these were two um, uh, questions that were uh, asked on uh, scales that range from one to six. Again, here the 
so with decision regret, a higher number means that there would have been more regret, which is, so we want a lower number on that one. Um, satisfaction with partner decision making, uh, the higher the number, the better. Um, and by and large across the, the, the two decision arms, or the control arm versus the decision arm, and then uh, across mothers and fathers, there's very, uh, no statistical differences. Um, and overall, uh, in terms of decision regret, it's fairly low on that scale. Um, and then satisfaction with partner decision making is, is fairly high. Um, again, with test related distress and concerns about the child's future health, these were ra uh, rated on um, scales that range from one to four. Um, again, no differences across these groups. Um, test related distress was, was fairly low, um, not, not quite as good as the decision regret and satisfaction with partner decision making uh, on average. Um, and then concerns about the child's future health um, were, were slightly higher. Um, but again, no differences between the, the control group and the decision arm. So what we're seeing here, or what we, we can uh, feel pretty confident about is that the, having the option to um, receive the additional results that are different from what you, you would get from standard newborn screening didn't uh, you know, cause you know, a lot of distress for those, those per, uh, participants who had that option. So just a few conclusions uh, from here um, is that uh, participants made up their minds about uh, NGS, NDS early on, um, largely by the end of the educational section of the, the decision aid. They, they seem to have made up their mind. Whether that you know, was made up while they were completing the decision aid, that's, that's not clear. It might have been um, done even before that, you know, just in terms of um, interest in these results uh, leading uh, people to um, join the study to begin with. Um, also, parents tended to think the decision aid was helpful, which was nice to see, um, having worked on the decision aid development team. Um, and then lastly, the control and randomized parent groups didn't differ from one another on, on several decision outcomes, like regret, satisfaction with partner decision making, distress, or concerns about the child's health. And with that, I'll just uh, acknowledge the, the large team that, that worked on this project. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you. So we'll have one more presentation before we go to break. And we will be hearing from Robert Green, who will be speaking from Brigham and Women's Hospital to talk about yeah, the BabySeek project. 